Do the Christian believe that God he gave birth to Jesus? No. I don't think so. No. So why why the Quran is saying that? Doesn't it say that? Uh, you see here they, they translated the as he begotten not, nor he begotten. In Arabic it says clearly more that he never gave birth, never he was born. All right. But no Christian believe that God gave birth to Jesus, and nobody believed that God was born, which means the Father was born, because we are talking about he never gave birth, gave birth, and never was born. So God, the one who never gave birth, is supposedly the Father, and the Father never been born. But the Christian don't believe in that anyway. And then he mm. copied from the Old Testament saying, and there is none like into him. So all of this is a collective verses from the Jews, from the, you know, uh, he's putting things together and they, they don't make sense. Brother, I have a question for you. <clears throat> sure. How did he do this if he was an illiterate man? He did what? How did he take all these, you're saying that he put all these things together? How did he put these things together if he's illiterate? First of all, there is nowhere in the Quran, this is a fiction of Muslims, it says that the, he was illiterate. If you go in the hadith, you will find the following. Ibn Abbas said, when Allah Apostle was in the in his deathbed, so Muhammad now is dying. Okay. And there, there were some men in the house, obviously Muslim men. He said, come, come near. I will write for you something after which you will not go astray. Okay. And then uh, 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 some of them, i.e. the companions, specifically Omar actually, he said, Allah Apostle is seriously ill. In fact, doesn't say that, by the way. It says he is, he is going crazy. You know, don't listen to him. When somebody, you know, when a man he's he's in the bed uh, the, the the deathbed and he say that and you say uh, ignore him he is seriously ill which mean what which mean he lost his mind right and yes and uh, and he said to them and you have the holy quran allah book is sufficient for us so that the uh, umar he's saying to muhammad are you stupid or what we have the quran is enough for us why you want to write a book for us so here they start they start uh, 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 fighting and look what it says here some of them they said give him writing material so he might he, he may write for you something do you see it yes if muhammad do not know how to write they will not give him some material to write they will say what's was a uh, prophet what do you want to say we are going to write it for you right how did he do where did that story come from then well this is a bukhari this is Sahih Bukhari, and this is Sahih Hadith. Could you give me the number for this? Sure, hadith? no problem. I will show you the reference on the screen so everybody will see it with you. This is Sahih Bukhari, Hadith number 4432, book number 64. Uh, though, oh, by the way, all those numbers, not necessarily they are accurate. This is the in the when they translate. But anyway, this is how it is here. All right? Okay. Is it showing on the screen for you? Yes. All right. So Muhammad, first of all, he know how to write, how to read. You will see the Quran saying it clearly. Who is the one illiterate? The Muslim. Why they say Muhammad is illiterate? Because the Quran say he's illiterate. But the Quran never say that illiterate mean do not know how to write, how to read. Have nothing to do. This is a religious book. This is a religious book. It's not about who can write, how can read. It's about who knows the word of God and who do not. So those who knows the word of God, they are called people of the book. Chapter 2, verse number 78. Read with me carefully, my friend. And there is uh, among them illiterate who know not the book. Do you see it? Yes. Okay. So what? who is the illiterate in Islam? Is it about writing or reading? Or it's about not knowing the book? It's about not knowing the book. So why the Muslim, they, they, they don't see it? You know, why they are blind? Just they are copy-paste. Nobody, nobody want to think for a second, where you get this from? The Quran is full of stupid things with my respect to you. I'm not trying to insult you. Do you really, as an example, did you hear about scientific miracle in the Quran? Yes. Okay, can you give me one? 
Um, the one about fingerprints and uh, hmm. being able to identify with fingerprints. Do you, know, do you know what I'm talking about? Absolutely. We all have fingerprint. However, they are unique. Even identical twins have different fingerprints. However, no one know this 14 year, 1400 years ago. But this is was mentioned in the Quran that in the resurrection day, Allah will recreate human with all details, even their fingertips. Today, we know that those contain fingerprints uh, which are unique in each individual. Okay, let us read together. Yes, indeed, we are able to resurrect his finger fingertips. Uh, you know, my friend, do you see anywhere they are speaking about fingerprint? His fingertips is the same as fingerprint. No. Okay. What the verse here is saying, even this, even the bones, which is, which is one of the smallest bones in the human being or for the human being, we are going to put them together. And, you know, we can go right now and see the interpretation and you will see the interpretation says exactly what I say. It have nothing to do with fingerprint. What fingerprint? It's a fabrication. Have nothing to do with the truth. And they lie about it. Ask yourself if the Muslims are decent people, and obviously you are. I'm not going to say you are one of them, because I can tell that you have decency in your heart. But why those who they are fabricating this miracle? Obviously, this is a fabrication. Correct? Do you agree with me? Yes. Okay. Why somebody he believe in God, and yet he is religious, yet he fabricate what is called miracles? What is the reason you think? I was told that. The book is not a book of miracles, but a book of signs. And maybe if things weren't, if things aren't scientific now, that at some point in the future they might be. Okay, can can God make mistakes? No. Okay. Have you ever heard of a woman? She have a breast testicles. <laughs> have a what testicles? Breast testicles. I've never heard of that. Well, the Quran says that Muslim women look like he's talking about Muslim women because as I know I never I never heard I, I went to school like I have a I finished elementary school and as I remember they never taught us that women have a breast testicle if you go in the Quran in chapter 86 verse number 7 was <laughs> sama <laughs> let man see what he is created okay and then he continues saying how the man is created he is created from water gushing forth so it's what it's a water gushing forth gushing from where meaning the sexual fluid that it comes out breast forth from the man and the woman all right now where this water is coming from read with me carefully uh, my friend proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs meaning the backbone or the ribs uh, uh, the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women <laughs> do you see it yes so what kind of god he teach us that women they have a gushing fluid coming from between their ribs coming all the way to to their vagina i don't know well this is why i'm not married my friend abdullah i'm afraid I'm afraid to get married and then I go to the bedroom and my wife she take off her clothes and instead of finding that she have a breast I find excuse my language she have balls there in her breast area <laughs> so this is God this is God you tell me how Muhammad he was able to write this this is a proof that Muhammad is really a, a funny man he's a crazy man what what kind of a prophet he said that but obviously, don't the sheikhs know this verse? They have the entire my friend who there, Abdullah. Have you ever been in the Middle East? Yes, I've, I've been to visit. Okay, before. who dare That's to what... say who dare to say a negative word against the Quran? Who dare? Nobody, they will kill you in a but second. But you're saying they know, but you're saying they know they absolutely know. they know it's here. We go, it's written by them. Who is the one who wrote this explanation for us? Isn't it a sheikh himself? <laughs> right? It's, this is a big sheikh. You know, so they knew for sure, but who there? They but knew what about sheikhs? What about sheikhs in America? My friend, it's still they don't dare. 
the Muslim they fear is the Muslim they fear Islam they fear you know because but, but you're saying but you're saying they know my friend do you know the guy who came with the miracle number 19 no search his name they killed him in Arizona uh, Rashad Khalifa Rashad Khalifa thank you very much uh, what the hell yeah I thought that it says that he was killed because he said he was a messenger no no my friend he, he all what he said that you know he is you know obviously the the way he was able to discover it he was inspired to do it and the reason they killed him because he had to take verses out of the Quran to make the number 19 work so he said there's verses in the Quran obviously they are not from the Quran and the proof the number 19 calculation according to him will not work unless we take them off that's why they killed him so what is making you stay as a Muslim Abdullah what do you think about denouncing Islam but don't you think Islam is really funny and cannot be from God do you think this is God is talking that women she have balls in her ribs I don't think so but that's yeah? so, everything that's come on everything. be honest you should deny you should deny this cult if I am you I you know I'm, I'm sure you're you're you are not you're you know you're a smart man why why a man like you would accept such a thing like this this is an insult to you because my friend when you follow someone and worship someone and this someone he do not know a very simple thing about a human being if Allah is the one who created us do not he know how we pre produce babies didn't he knew right he should know right he is the one who make us supposedly so obviously the one who made the Quran is a fabricator he cannot be God there's no way God will say that yeah so if I am you my friend I will denounce Islam and I will I will say Muhammad is a false prophet and this will be the first step for you to be free from illusion this is illusion this is madness you are just creating yourself an illusion saying okay there's a God his name is Allah and he is perfect and then when we go and read what he's saying we will find how funny how silly what he is saying so if I am you I will say Muhammad is a false prophet right now as we speak what do you think the the thing about the backbone and the semen that is not from God absolutely right and not what about what about the backbone <laughs> since when the sperm of the man is coming from the backbone <laughs> Abdullah my friend be careful don't ever fail down in your backbone you see this is why I have insurance over my backbone <laughs> I am still single and when I go in the street you know like I put some things around my waist because I don't want my backbone to be you know broke what if something happened to the backbone that's why when I sit in the chair I said carefully imagine you sit like you know and you break it I mean that's it you you will never have kids no more backbone backbone the sperm of the man is coming from the backbone that is science so what the balls for that's stupid that's stupid thank you very much so you just left Islam my friend welcome <laughs> I need to ask I need to ask someone about this verse that doesn't make any goddamn sense I, I know but I, I wish uh, what what do you want to ask who who is better than Ibn Kathir now to ask the Sheikh who is the most there this is Ibn Kathir your Sheikh will learn from Ibn Kathir yeah so Denounce Muhammad, my friend. Denounce the devil. Say, I don't believe in you, Muhammad. Obviously, you're a false man. Okay, there's one thing that I'm struggling with right now. There right. Was, I saw I saw a debate between Shabir Ali and David Wood, and they were saying that there was that Muhammad gave verses about praying to three goddesses. Can you explain that? Praying to three goddesses. Ah, oh. Allah to Allah. He said. He said it was a. David Wood said it was a satanic verse. Yeah, you see. In, uh, in this story here, Muhammad, he was alone with a bunch of uh, uh, pagan Arab. And because he's a hypocrite man, he starts saying, the three daughters of Allah, they are their, their intercession is a must. And he bowed down to them, and the Arab, they bowed down with him. But there was people there, you know, and they start spreading the, the, the story that Muhammad, he did that. And the story arrived to the Muslims and the Muslim they were wondering how this guy he says to us something in the morning and he do something afternoon totally the opposite how he said to us we should not pray to the Allah al-Uzza but when he was alone with the pagan he prayed to Allah al-Uzza and he say 
their religion and their and their intercession is a must Muhammad in order to cover his ass he said oh well yes I did that I cannot deny it but it was shaitan he throw that in my tongue and Allah sent me Jibreel to tell me this is was not from me it was from shaitan what do you think about this story I don't know well you see the Muslim they say well shaitan uh, he try you know he did not try he was successful and the point Allah will cancel it he will delete it right if it's not there if it's not there then why should why Allah need to cancel it you cannot you do not need to cancel something is not there correct yeah yeah so shaitan was successful and the Quran confirmed that shaitan he threw into into Muhammad desire and here there's other question the Muslim they say to you nobody can make Quran but Allah right yeah okay how Muhammad he took Quran from the shaitan but he did not notice that this is Quran from shaitan if nobody can make Quran but Allah <laughs> here we go Muhammad himself he took the Quran of the shaitan and he did not notice this is from shaitan this is a contradiction for the Quran how the Quran says nobody can make Quran right this is so stupid. This is so stupid. Thank you very much. This is the second time you say stupid. The third time you are out of Islam totally. <laughs> what else, my friend Abdullah? I'm here to help you. Give me another thing you think uh, to clear confusion for you. Honestly, I have a lot of questions, but right now I have to go to work. But where, where I... do you want to go, Abdullah? Come on, just wait. Before know, you go, I, before you go, denounce Muhammad. Say he's a false prophet. Come on, be honest. Say it. Be a man. You just said it twice. It's stupid. You said the, you said that Allah is a stupid. You said the Quran is a stupid. You said Muhammad is a stupid. And now you don't want to say, I am out of Islam. I'm out of Islam. You are out of Islam, right? Yes. Thank you very much. Glory to the Lord. I mean to that. I'm so happy for you, Abdullah. Now, Abdullah. You told me you are going to go to work, but I will before you go to work. I have an invitation for you You know, my name is a Christian Prince, right? Yes, and I am a fisherman. I fish for good men The Lord my Lord the Messiah He told me to bring you to him and right now in the front of more than 700 people I'm asking you To accept the invitation for the Lord of the Lord for the King of the King for the good name who speak no bad no sin to accept him i invite you to accept the messiah and for sure this is your decision i cannot force you to accept i cannot make you accept it's you who believe or not there's no name better than his name there's no teaching better than his teaching there's no one says love your enemy but him he speak wisdom he is the god of wisdom i invite you to accept the christ as a savior what do you say my but, what do, but what do i do then sorry again but what do i do then after i do that well what you do after that you know we learn we learn about the messiah feel free to ask me questions i will be happy to help you we can send you to some christian brothers who they can help you and guide you and you can read the Bible and you can enjoy it and then you will you will see that your life will change you will have a journey amazing journey with the Messiah don't worry about what will happen next because the Messiah he will be with you <coughs> don't hesitate don't let the devil stop you my friend, okay. my friend, if sometime I, we don't yes. we don't know if we will live for the tomorrow, right? Yeah. So don't don't put down the invitation. He's watching, he's listening. Except I mean to that, hallelujah. I'm so happy for you, uh, Abdullah. And uh uh, uh, the Bible says that the happiness in the kingdom of God will be just for one person is saved so let me call you brother Abdullah from now on 
Brother Abdullah, I want you to say that I accept the Messiah as my personal Savior, and by him and by his name, and by him only I will be saved. Say that, my friend. I accept him and his name and accept him as my personal Lord and Savior. I mean to that. Hallelujah. Happy for you, my friend. Trust me, each time I hear one of, of our brothers accepting the Messiah, I feel like my, my body as if I am truly shaking, as if I'm really like there is there is something happening. This is amazing. This is so beautiful. And I am sure that's you inside you. You will have you will have the same feeling. My friend Abdullah, I advise you to download the, the, the Bible from the internet if you don't have it and start reading the gospel. We have four gospels, four witnesses, all of them to speak the same thing, but they report stories about Jesus, what he said, what he did. You can start from the book of John or you can start from the book of Mark or from, it doesn't matter. Four witnesses, they witness for the Lord. Books of wisdom, books of love, books of journey personal journey this is why i said to you accept the messiah as your personal savior this is not about worshiping a god who want us to be his slaves this is about worshiping god who consider us ours as our his children this is why when we pray as a christians jesus said to the to his disciple when they ask him how we pray he said to them pray like this our father our father and this is the huge difference between Islam and Christianity. If you ask a Muslim, and you can search right now in the internet, why Allah created a human being, they will say, Allah created a human being and jinn to worship him. This is not our God. Our God, he created us to be his children because he loved us. So the idea of a creation is a huge between us and, the, and Islam. In Islam, it's about a God who worship himself, actually, and he have a self-esteem issue. In Christianity, God, he created us to be his children. And his children here does not mean that he, you know, some Muslim, they will say, oh, Christian believe that uh, God is their father. He must be sleeping with their mother. Our father here is a very, very loving description for the one who provides us everything and the one who loves us. You see, when, 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 when there is a, a family, you will see that the father, he do everything, and the mother, they do everything in their hand to feed, to take care of their family and their children. Our Father is the best and the only provider. And this is why we are His children and He loves us. He did not create us to go to hell. He did not create us to be humiliated. He created us to be His children. All what we need to do is to accept His invitation, and you just did. So I'm happy for you, Abdullah, and feel free anytime to call me if you wish. Thank you so much.